In the pursuit of trying to become someone useful in society, I am constantly at odds with either sitting at home and doing my work or going and showing the people that I have accumulated in my life and the people that have been around how exactly I go about caring, how, how I can go about being a better human being. And I want to talk a little bit about that balance and how it's really just, it comes down to what you want to get out of life. And the freedoms that we want out of life should be an individual pursuit every single time. There is hardly anyone that's ever going to be able to tell you exactly the way that you should live your life. But the blueprint that I like to follow is find someone that you want to be like, or you assume that you want to be like, and go to the depths to try to understand their philosophy. Really try to understand who they are and what they're trying to accomplish both in their professional and personal life. And so that person for me right now is Brandon Dawson, who is Grant Cardone's partner in Cardone Ventures. I am reading his book, Nine Figure Mindset, um, Natalie Dawson's book, Teamwork. And the idea is that I want to scale my business to multiple millions of dollars so that I understand what it takes to have a professional C-suite that knows what they're doing and that can run a company potentially without me. And a lot of the things that I'm coming across that are actually valuable really come down to the philosophy of the business. And it's really cool to hear that someone so successful, uh, at least outwardly, and I believe in his relations and interpersonal things. I mean, he believes apparently in uh, signs in life, the tendency for things to poke out when we're, when we're least expecting them, but our ability to actually see them like coincidences. I don't really believe coincidences exist anymore because so many times in my life, whenever those coincidences have sprouted up, well, they tend to mean something. They tend to say to me, hey, Tarab, you should pay attention to this thing. You should interact with this person. There's a, there's a strange synchronicity in life when we go out and do the work. And I don't know if it's, if it's actually a thing, but it certainly feels like it is. So pay attention. That's my suggestion to you. But he also believes in a system in which the entire team has equity of the business and actually recruiting people based on their interest in evolution rather than the skill sets that they might have deeply embedded or the philosophies that they might have deeply embedded, which is a really cool way, in my opinion, to run any sort of business, any sort of organization, is listen, like, why would you hire someone that has the growth potential here that they've already met? I, I assume that hiring people and being on a team means that we as leaders want to grow and best case scenario that everyone in our team also wants to grow and that means that in their personal life or on their own time they'll be spending that energy reading the books they'll be spending that energy meeting the people they'll be spending that time and, and creative thought and trying to make their own life better thusly making them more productive when they're in the workplace or more savvy when they're actually having discussions with clients or potential partners. And the cool part to me about this is that I think a lot of times in life we have certain philosophies that we don't know are really correct, but they feel correct. And in studying someone that's done it before you, someone that has the data to prove that they indeed know what they're talking about, we find things that align with our core philosophies, which validates the approach. And I don't know if there's very much else that's satisfying in life than a validation of philosophy. Those of you that are watching this video, if you made it this far, by the way, smash that thumbs up, helps a lot. Uh, subscribe, comment, see what you think about your philosophies and how they're evolving. But it's, it's funny that a lot of us as leaders in society really they don't teach us 
how important it is to have a good business philosophy, a good career philosophy, a good personal philosophy, a good spiritual philosophy. And I think it's actually integral to our emotional intelligence. It's like the it's like the guiding track of our life. And so few of us spend time to build that up to the point where I think I'm going to be telling my interns a lot more that hey, you know, uh maybe you should be reading a spiritual text every now and then. Maybe you should be reading something about the philosophies of old old leaders, biographies, something in history, you know? Besides the the personal development, the atomic habits, the rich dad poor dad, the financial education, we need to have philosophical education as leaders. And it shows in every aspect of our life. I mean, it's it's really everything. Without without having a secure understanding of how we would approach a situation if confronted with it, how would we approach it creating a system, how we would want to influence a system. We're never really going to get to a point where we feel like we're in control of our lives. And at the end of the day, I think that's what that's what catalysts in society are looking for is control over their situation. I mean, a catalyst in, innately is something or someone that by merely by their presence, by our presence, society is different. That groups of people are different that we lend to the evolution of an otherwise rather stagnant situation or a depressing situation. That's why I've made this channel to make sure that those of you that know you have this ability that see the signs in your life of of you taking action and actually things moving forward and faster forward or more organically forward that you know there is other people in society that are doing these things and that there are clear steps to improve yourself so that you can be even a, a bigger impact. I had a really interesting conversation with an intern of mine that told me that his his mission, and I'm actually doing a podcast with him soon, uh, that his mission in life is to help people, to help people in situations where they might be having their back against the wall or feeling incredibly depressed or low in life, you know, to the point of like suicide, to the point of like the the really dark dark things that happen in life and to, to be there and to listen to them and to care um, it's so important it's so so important to have a human aspect to what we're trying to achieve monetarily or in the world and I always say this to people I'm like listen you pr please pursue the nth degree of wealth and material possessions and uh, stability for your families and stability for your mind and stability for I guess the garden that you're making for yourself you know but do it with a sense of service really try to do it with a sense of service in your mind for other people that innate intuition that you have about life use that in your career it will be part of what makes your career satisfying it will be a massive part of what makes your career satisfying, which doubles down against the, in the philosophy of things. So that's kind of that's kind of how I've been approaching learning business philosophies that are useful in larger contexts. There's a lot of little details that go into making those philosophies a reality, like our ability to communicate with people properly and to actually dig deep enough and ask the right questions to determine whether what their motivations are and whether or not we understand them enough. But at the end of the day, if we don't even know where we're going, we're never going to realize the gaps in our knowledge. We're never going to realize really how far we have to go in a certain field and a certain skill set before, before actually seeing results, tangible results. I've been a creative my, own, my entire life, essentially. I mean, I paint, I, I create music, I create organizations, companies, whatever it is. And every time I'm looking for an indicator of growth, I'm looking for an indicator of continued success. 
But the reality is oftentimes in creativity, there is no indicator rather than the satisfaction that you get. And I think business and I think creating organizations, the satisfaction we get really comes down to how happy our culture is, how healthy our client relationships are, whether we feel like we're providing genuinely the best thing that we can. And let me repeat that again, genuinely the best thing that we can, which comes down to our philosophy. Our conception of the best we can comes down to our philosophy. So hopefully this message finds you well. Smash that thumbs up button, helps a lot. Subscribe, throw me a comment about things that you may be struggling with, and actualize your potential catalyst. This world needs you. Take care of yourself.